Hey everybody, Joe here again for Canada at the Movies. Um, this time we're going to discuss episode four of the Obi-Wan series. Now, I've been following this one over and over and over again. I've definitely watched this, uh, the fourth episode twice already. Um, the thing is, the fourth episode is the shortest one that we've seen so far, but it is still jam-packed with so much. Um, so it takes place on a moon uh, in the Mustafar system called Nur. Um, so we end up having our spy from one of the previous episodes who uh, we all know from Game of Thrones. She decided that she was going to help out and go back undercover in order to help Obi-Wan uh, get into the fortress where the uh, Inquisitors are holding uh, Leia. So she's able to get through by just by the means of her um, being able to lie very well. Um, she, you know, walks up to the gate and one of the uh, lower class uh, security people um, who would typically be answering to her uh, decides to stop her and says, hey, this isn't your quadrant. What are you doing over here? And uh, she said that, you know, I have uh, classified information that I'm about to bring in. In fact, there's no point in me even talking to you. Why am I even wasting my breath on you? And um, that shut him down like entirely. That was very impressive of her. Now, um, so you'll see that they uh, are able to let her through and she's um, at that point begins to help Obi-Wan at a station in order to uh, swim in. Now, if you notice when he's swimming uh, uh, underneath the fortress, he's using a uh, breathing apparatus that you can see from episode one when they were uh, swimming underwater, uh, you know, in the Gungan area. So that was a, a callback already, if you are uh, a Star Wars fan like myself. So when he makes his way inside, he's able to uh, neutralize one of the Star Wars, uh, one of the uh, stormtroopers, uh, because they heard a noise and whatnot. But you'll find that each of these episodes are very reminiscent of the episodes from... Um, you know, uh, of the episodes from like episode one, two, three, um, all the way up to, I'm assuming six now. So, um, you'll find that there's a lot of disturbing things going on within the, the, uh, Inquisitor's Fortress. Um, not only do they keep the trophies like the lightsabers and, uh, things of that nature, but they also, um, were freezing younglings and other Jedi in place. It's not a fortress. It's a tomb. A straight. I got that straight from Obi Wan, and I agree. It was a tomb. Now it, I'm trying to figure out why they would hold on to these bodies, hold on to these um, people. But I'm, I'm assuming we'll see why that is. Uh, there's a lot of fan theories going on about it. Um, one of which that I heard was that uh, perhaps they, uh, you know, this is how Palpatine learns how to uh, clone um, force sensitive individuals because that's uh, something that's very difficult. Um, but anyway, going back to the episode itself, Leia is a very strong in the force. She does not understand the force or how to use it, but she's constantly using it by mistake. Um, uh, Reva tries to uh, you know, get into her mind with the force uh, to talk about the path. The path is the underground railroad that we discovered in the last episode um, where they were smuggling out uh, younglings and other Jedi in order to escape the Empire. Um, but Leia didn't break just like she didn't break in episode four. Um, she didn't break in this episode four either. Um, because she is strong and she was able to resist the uh, Jedi mind tricks or in this case the Sith mind tricks that they were trying to uh, do on her. Now where I think Leia messed up is that she allowed her droid, um, her toy droid that we've seen in each of these episodes to um, you know try to attack Reva in some way or help her out in some way but Reva ends up catching it. And Reva's like, okay, well, you know, um, I've had these before. 
Um, I used to have a droid and I've had everything taken away from me. Nobody's coming from me for you, um, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm assuming that goes back to Reva's um, former life as a Padawan. Um, after Order 66, um, I'm assuming that they heard many of the Jedi saying that there's nothing left there. There's no need to come back. But I'm assuming Reva was one of them. And to hear that nothing is left there, but you were one of the Padawan is there. No wonder she's so angry at Obi-Wan as well as the rest of the Jedi. Um, what I found weird, though, was that Darth Vader wasn't in this episode for very long. Um, and we'll touch on that in a little bit because we need to talk about the escape. I loved the escape. It was reminiscent of episode four when they were using the uh, snow gliders or correct me if I'm wrong. I can't remember the name of the ships, but they were able to uh, shoot a lot of the stormtroopers down. Um, but unfortunately, Wade, which was one of the characters that was flying one of those ships that was helping to end the escape process, unfortunately ended up being shot down. So unfortunately, we have Wade in the water. Wade in the water, children. Wade in the water. I know that's really dark, and I probably shouldn't make jokes like that, but I'm a Sith, so it doesn't matter. Anyway, so <laughs> um, we cut to the next scene, and we find uh, Reva being forced choked by Darth Vader because, you know, reminiscent, he said, listen, if you fail me, that means death. So she's being choked to death at this point, but Reva is able to utter a few words, I let them go. And so Darth Vader let her down and was like, wait a minute, what did you say? I let them go. I placed a tracker on them. And uh, Vader was like, are you sure it's on them? He's like, yes, sir, it is on them. And we cut to the scene where Obi-Wan and Leia are in uh, their um, ship on their way back from their escape. And since they were let go, they zoom in on Leia's droid and, you know, most assuredly, we see it blinking red lights, meaning that the tracker is on the droid that Leia plays with like a toy. So it looks like Leia is going to be the one um, that unfortunately is going to get them caught up with in the next episode. I'm looking forward to the next episode. I'm going uh, ham with these. I, you know, I, there isn't one episode that I've watched so far that I don't like. Um, I truly enjoy the Obi-Wan, uh, series. Um, and it's, it's really bringing me a lot of joy. Uh, so if you're a star Wars fan, let me know what you guys think or what you all think about, uh, this episode. I like to, you know, engage with you in the comments below. Again, I've been Joe. Uh, for Canada at the Movies, please click that like, share, and subscribe, as well as ring that notification bell, just so um, when we uh, drop more content, you don't miss it. All right? Y'all have a good one. Take care.